So I want to break away from the idea that America is suffering from polarization. We're not a polarized country at all. We're, we're a country with one fairly normal political party and one highly abnormal entity. I don't even want to call it a political party anymore. Now, why is that? It's asymmetric polarization, okay? All right. You get asymmetric warfare, asymmetric polarization. Now, why did that happen? We can talk about all day long about people who were left out, people left behind, the roots of populism, blah, blah, blah. I blame the people who actually did it, who's the Republican Party, who back in the 1990s decided they were going to create a politics of rage. That was how they were going to win. Rage or rage? Rage. rage. Well, the two go together in this case. Okay. Sure. <laughs> hatred. 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 But organized hatred, which they thought that they could ride to victory every four years. They would rouse up the... the, the they have contempt for these people, by the way. They don't, they don't really like them. They just use them. So for a decade and a half, getting on to two decades, they did this. They roused everybody up, knowing they were going to sell them out. They were never going to get rid of you know, ab a, a, you know, abortion rights right away. That was never going to happen. They continued and they continued and they thought they could ride it. But if you ride the back of the tiger, you end up inside. And that's exactly what happened to them. That's exactly what happened to them. And, 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 and the only one who figured this out, the great political genius who figured this out, was a failed New York businessman named Trump, who understood what, what had been happening. But I blame a whole succession of Republicans, who now we all like very much, right? They're the never Trumpers, they're all our buddies. They were the ones. So there's an historical thing. I, I, I believe that you can explain politics best by explaining politics, rather than trying to find all of the social roots. Yes, they're there, but somebody's doing it. And I think that if we look at all of these places, by the way, we'll find a, sim a similar kind of dynamic. I disagree, absolutely. Okay, good, good. Absolutely. Go, 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 go. absolutely, completely. So, so I, um, and I, I know I've been called in to talk about education, but you just, you've just hit the, all the wrong buttons. Uh, what, what I see in the US is not um, one side of bad people who just got real bad. Um, what I see is that the thing um, that goes by liberalism um, that the Democratic Party has stood for in the past has been under a long, state, a long stage of decay. Um, I come from the Bay Area in California, very, very progressive, very, very Democrat, deep blue. Um, there are literally hundreds of thousands of homeless people in California. No, no, no. It's not because the Republicans I went in there and made them all homeless. No, I understand. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm so you. so what, you, what you have is you have the rise of globalization, you have the rise of global capitalism, and you have this class of people who mouth progressive words, but they, um, they fight for the, the most powerful and the wealthiest people when the chips are down. I don't agree with... Uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of Trump, I think he's despicable, but I think you have to look at um, where that came from, what they're responding to, what they see when they look at our country. Um, and it's not somehow that they see like troglodyte sort of, you know, blurry things. What they see is a country which no longer cares about their well-being, which no longer respects their point of view, which no longer cares about their education, which no longer has any interest in their flourishing and only wants to see them suffer. That's what I think they see. I agree with 95% of what you just said. 95%. 95%. Especially with the progressives. Not, that's not my side. The people who are in San Francisco you know, uh, what's his name, Boudin? Yeah, Chesa. Chesa. Yeah. These are not... That's a very minor figure. I understand. But it's it's, but what Silicon, I'm it's is, Silicon Valley, what I'm it's is, Jeff Bezos. It's, I agree. Uh, I agree these with are all, all of that. very good Democrats. All there. Bill Gates. These are the people... Biden got through that big piece of legislation a month ago. How did he do it? Because Bill Gates got interested in it. Now, all, people all, talk about the Russian oligarchs. All true. All true. However, <laughs> however, it is not that these are troglodytes. These people are being exploited, they're being used, they're being duped, but they're being used by people who really are evil. We will keep experiencing this crisis of democracy because this crisis is basically an expression of panic. 
It's all about panic on the part of people who think that either something is being taken away from them now or something has been taken away from them a long time ago. And when people talk about pluralism, it's very important to understand, and you know, America, we pride ourselves that pluralism is our public philosophy. India prides itself on this and so on. In fact, it's murderously hard to get people in a society to live with difference. Mm -hmm. It's murderous, and I mean murderously, literally murderously hard. And we'll, so in Europe, for example, I think there are only two choices open to Europe. The recognition of multi-ethnicity or fascism. I don't see any other choice. And I think that until we deal with these problems, with this reality, then we're going to experience this crisis over and over and over again. <laughs> I totally agree with you. We have to understand that uh, democracy isn't, uh, you know, it's a very complex regime and it's not a natural uh, uh, political regime because uh, freedom is very complex. You have economic freedom, political freedom, social freedom, etc. And, you, uh, and uh, you have oppositions between uh, all these uh, category of freedom. You have to, to try to reconcile all this. And because, uh, uh, in fact, uh, you, you, you are not, uh, you, 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 you don't born as a citizen of a democracy. It's an education, an education to responsibility, an education to respect of the, of the, of the others. And that's why, in fact, we have to understand that uh, there is, a, a democracy can't be quiet. And democracy is not permanent. It's always contested. It's always fragile. If you look at the first democracy uh, since, it was just 60 years between uh, uh, it was uh, 461 and uh, 404 uh, uh, before Christ. And uh, since the, the, the Athenian uh, democracy died of his, its defeat against Sparta, but uh, in fact, the, the real cause of the defeat against Sparta was the fact that the, the Athenian uh, democracy broke down and that it was the, the, the populist of this time uh, who, who, went, uh, who, who went to power. So we have to understand, and that's why, that it's true that democracy are peaceful regimes, but freedom will always be a fight.